by this time next week, a pair of NASA astronauts could be on their way to the International Space Station after lifting off from Kennedy Space Center. This is set to be the first launch from U.S. soil in nearly nine years. Now, a little more than an hour and a half ago, the two astronauts who will crew that launch landed right here in Central Florida. Doug Hurley and Bob Bankin flew in from Houston to Kennedy Space Center. Hurley was one of the last NASA astronauts to make that same trip in 2011 for the last space shuttle launch. News 6's James Barbero will have more on their arrival coming up on News 6 at 6. And while the launch is planned for a week from today, there are several factors that must line up for NASA to allow that launch to even happen. Among the most important factors, the weather. We just saw SpaceX scrub its most recent Starlink mission because of Tropical Storm Arthur. And there are more meteorological factors to consider when humans are on board, that's for sure. News 6's Eric Von Anken taking a closer look at the role weather will play in this historic launch. He joins us live at Kennedy Space Center. So Eric, we're a week out. How are those early forecasts looking? Hey, to tell you this, Matt, not good at this point. There are showers in the forecast. Of course, it's very early, but consider this. That's on top of chances that already aren't great. Why? Because the new launch weather criteria to get that Dragon crew off the ground just got a whole lot more complicated. Two, one, zero, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis. Before any space shuttle got the green light to go, the weather had to be perfect. Over the Kennedy Space Center, out in the Atlantic, even in Europe, in case the shuttle had to make an emergency landing, or if the astronauts had to ditch the shuttle over water and bail out. If the weather wasn't perfect, launch would have to wait until another day, and it did, sometimes scrubbing the shuttle two, three days in a row or more. Liftoff of the Falcon 9 and Cargo Dragon. In recent years, flying a Falcon 9 to the space station with only cargo on board was much more simple. The only weather to worry about was in the sky. But now, with two humans inside the Dragon crew capsule, with the ability to abort in case of emergency, all the way up to the space station, and the requirement to splash down in the ocean, suddenly the seas are incredibly important. There's been a great deal of thought put into it. They Stephen Payne is a former space shuttle test director. He was in charge of contingency planning, things that could go wrong. He says NASA is monitoring wave heights up the East Coast, past Nova Scotia, across the Atlantic, and all the way to Ireland. If the entire path has got heavy winds and high seas, then it's an easy decision. If most of the path is clear, but there's a patch that's not so good, Perhaps you can adjust your abort range to either cut it loose just before or sometime after to avoid that piece. It's a brave new world of trying to launch rockets. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrell showed me what it would take. When we zoom out and go up the East Coast, the Carolinas, things start to build a bit. At this recording, off the coast of Boston, wave height two feet, I think we're a go. You get it up to Canada, though, between Halifax and St. John's, has a 14-foot wave recording on a buoy out there. That might be enough to shut it all down. We're talking cloud deck, lightning strikes, rain possibility, and wave heights all the way up the East Coast. How hard is that for all those things to line up that perfectly? That, that's, that's difficult. It's going to be very difficult. Tom estimates just the 30% chance of weather good enough to launch on any given day. Any given day. Um, and certainly we do expect uh, more, a uh, higher risk of weather-related scrubs on this mission. NASA's mission managers say the chances of getting the green light in the skies and oceans all the way to Europe are not good at all for Dragon crew. And so the combination of, of that, um, of, of all of those constraints put together, certainly I would expect there to be um, a very high chance of scrub. So if you're thinking of taking the day off to come out here, you're probably wondering how bad is too bad? And when is it good enough? Is that such a thing? And the answer, as you heard there in the story, is absolutely it could be good enough. NASA tells us that it evaluates the weather on any given launch day on a case by case basis. It comes down to calculated risk. Do they feel good enough about most of that flight abort path? If they feel good enough, they will launch again. Space flight entirely, as we've said for a long, long time, is all about.
calculated risk. We're now live at the Kennedy Space Center. Eric Von Eiken getting results. News 6.